In 2019, Slay World had the underground scene in a frenzy. At the time, they were just kids, making music in their room. But before they knew it, they had invented a new sound and started a wave. The group became somewhat legendary due to their music, all the classics they dropped, and cult-like fanbase. It was the start of a new era in the SoundCloud scene that was pretty much non-existent at the time. When fans hear Slay World, they think of members such as Summers, Can Can, and Autumn, which is far from the full story, how this group began, what it really was, and who was even a part of it. Contrary to popular belief, Slay World was not started by Summers, Can Can, or even Autumn. It was created by a guy named Kane Carlson from Canada. Kane was friends with Goonie, the person who sort of put the rap group together and was one of his earliest supporters. Around 2016 to 2017, he used to show Goonie a lot of support. He would send him clothes and originally they made beats together. It became a music collective, but really was just people Goonie was cool with. In the beginning, it was really a skate collective and a clothing brand. There are actually a lot of older skate videos from YouTube with Kane's skate clips. To promote the clothing brand, a group chat for rappers was created with the help of Goonie. Goonie, Isaiah Tiji, and Frank's last day were some of the first members. Pretty soon, Summers, Can Can, and Autumn would join. The roster would consist of Summers, Autumn, Can Can, Goonie, Isaiah Tiji, Frank's Last Day, Endo, Alexander Prey, Venny, and Zay. The group chat even included SSG Kobe and Yeet at some point, but they weren't necessarily Slay, quote unquote. They were sort of close affiliates, along with Wyland. In short, if you were one of Goonie's friends, you were Slay World. But before we dive into how they met, here's some background information on the prominent members. First off, we have Goonie, the puzzle piece that brought the group together. Goonie is from Cleveland and he began as a producer really inspired by Metro Boomin. Nobody wanted to hop on his beat so he became a rapper himself. Next, Summers is the most popular rapper from Slay World. Summers is from Louisiana who started rapping at 16. He was homeschooled in high school due to poor grades and instead of using his laptop for schoolwork, he would record music. He's the founding father of the plug and beat sub genre which we all know and love. Hailing from Dallas, Texas, Can Can started out as a producer and was really successful. He would produce for Smoke Perp, Low Pump, and Famous Dex. And in the early stages of Slay World, he wasn't even rapping yet. Then we have Autumn, aka Twin Uzis. Autumn was a producer turned rapper and is also from Louisiana. Fun fact, he's from the same city as SSG Kobe. He was also one of the early pioneers of the plug and B sound. He even got his name from Summers, Autumn. Autumn is a season after Summers and Autumn started rapping after Summers, so he thought it was right. Isaiah TG is a rapper from Ohio, extremely experimental and maintains a pretty low key presence on the internet. Not too much is known about the other members of Slay World like Frank's Last Day, Endo, AZP, Vinay, Zay, except most of them are based in Florida. Okay, so back to how they all met. Before they even formally met each other, everyone in Slay knew each other from the start. Goonie had been listening to Summers since he went by Louis VD. Goonie and Summers would actually steal Can Can's beats before he had ever shown his face. They used to send each other songs around 2017 to 18. At that time, Can Can and Summers were not cool because Can didn't like how Summers would steal his beats. However, one day, Can Can typed his name in on SoundCloud and heard a Summers song that he produced. He said it was trash, but he kinda liked it, so he clicked on Summers' page. He then heard Pack Runner, and from there was like, this guy's the go, whoever he is, and got in contact with him. One day, he dropped Pack Runner, bitch, and then like, like some months later, I typed in my name on SoundCloud, and I seen the song with dudes, that shit was so ass. But I kinda like that shit, so I clicked on that page, and I heard Pack Runner, bitch. Then, bro, I was like, bro, this is a goat, whoever this is. I remember, like, then I had messages with him. And then I was like, bro, you go crazy. The first songs Can Can produced for him were mostly Pug and B songs, like 3AM and KD and GG. Similar to Pack Runner Bitch, the song that made Can Can a fan of Summers. In 2018, Summers told Can Can he was going to be in Houston. Can Can is from Dallas, so they linked up. The first time they met is actually documented in a rare vlog. A year later, they moved in together. The first crib Summers had, with Can Can in the north side of Houston. While this was happening, Goonie had moved to Florida. After high school, he had a regular job. He said screw it, and then just moved to Florida, where he linked with Frank. The first time Goonie went to Florida and linked up with Frank's last day, they were at an Airbnb. Frank's girlfriend and him were fighting, so she pulled up with her brothers. Long story short, Goonie and Frank beat the living hell out of them, the brothers, and even broke the youngest one's arm. She pulls up with her brothers, like trying to press him. Like they trying to press him, like come outside, bro. And I'm like, bro, who is these? Who are y'all? Like, what are y'all doing here? Because me and Frank, this is the first time I met this nigga, bro. Like, apparently we broke, like, the, it was a little, like, 16. I had to be, like, 17, 18 at the time. We broke his arm or something. Damn. I don't even they all met in 2019 when Can Can and Summers would begin coming out to Florida. They moved into a house in Orlando where Summers, Goonie, Can Can, and DJ YP, Hozizi, would live. Goonie later reflected on his earliest memories from that period, saying, That was, it was fun, bro. It was us being kids, man. Like, mm -hmm. that's 
It was fun. They would frequently link up with other members of Slate like Isaiah TG and Frank, as well as collaborating with close affiliates like SSG, Kobe, Yeet, and Wyland. Yeet and Goonie would actually send each other songs, and Goonie's largest song to this day is Zaza, a collaboration between himself, Kankin, and Yeet. Wyland was friends with Summer since early 2018 and has a couple tracks with them, and has songs with Kankin, Isaiah, and Slate associates like SSG, Kobe, and Yeet. Throughout this period, Kane was dropping clothes. He would drop t-shirts, beanies, sweats, and more. These designs were actually pretty nice and as of 2022, they're really rare and go for ridiculously high prices. Considering they are screen printed tees, and if you attempt to buy one, you'll likely get scammed in typical Slay World fashion. Summers, Autumn, and Goonie were all making Plug and B when they first joined Slay. Summers started Plug and B so naturally his work was the best. He dropped albums like Bell World, Bell World 2, and Revive. Bell World and Bell World 2 were dedicated to his girlfriend at the time, Bell. They were romantic songs where he would talk about how he couldn't get her out of his head. She was the best thing that ever happened to him and how much he needed her in his life. The album featured Goonie and had production from Can Can. The follow up, Bell World 2, was even better. He sings about his love for Bell, he never tell her a lie, and how she puts him in a trance. It was supposed to be a trilogy, but Bell cheated on him with one of his closest friends, Deuce. Revived is my favorite plug and B project by Summers. He'd started to perfect his plug and B sound and his flows were incredible on songs like The Boss, Cathedral, and Element. The album is addictive. The whole project has an ethereal dreaming production that makes you feel like you're floating, giving you the same vibe, yet no song sounds the same as another. He's not talking about anything in general, just life which is what makes it so relatable. Autumn would follow in Summer's footsteps with iconic tapes like Before Retribution 3, Retribution 3, and Modern Day Michelangelo. Autumn's music was very similar to Summer's, he often used the same flow, and Summer's was a very frequent collaborator. I feel like what sets Autumn apart was his music, his voice, and the fact that he produced a lot of music for himself. Songs like Nina and Can't Help It are plug and be classics, and that period of Summer's and Autumn dropping so many hits consistently will probably never return as they become so much more popular. Some of Goonie's earliest tracks, Hate Me, Goofy featuring Summers, PSA, and Can't Help It, are all plug and B songs. He had a slower flow and would really just rap about anything from flexing his clothes to being betrayed by his friends and his drug use. Just a side note, at this point Can Can wasn't rapping, he was really more of a producer. Pretty soon their sound would evolve and they began rapping in a style never heard before. Once again, Summers led this new wave. Summers would drop the albums World Against Me, Evolved, and Isolation, and multiple underground hits like Coke, Tessum, and RNS. World Against Me wasn't really that experimental, but it was a solid album where Summers showcased his versatility. In Evolved, Summers showed off his vocal ability, rapping in an auto-tuned high-pitched voice. He also paid his respects to his friend Banna and the late producer Hella Sketchy, who both passed away. Summers had started adding reverse ad-libs on his songs, which paired with soft hi-hats and quiet 808 sounded perfect. This was evident in Tessum, one of Summers' most well-known songs to date, which popularized what fans call his ghost reverse reverb effect. By this time, Kankan -Kan had started rapping too. He began after putting a poll on his Instagram story and being encouraged to by his followers. He released a couple of tapes, which to be honest, weren't very good since he just started rapping, but once he dropped his self-titled project Kankan, -Kan, he really started to shine. Uh-huh, it's probably a top 10 Slay World song, from the beat produced by Zangang and the way Kankan -Kan rapped on it. The hook was just him saying uh-huh. It was actually the first Kankan -Kan song I heard. The song was remixed by Summers and Isaiah TG. Kankan -Kan also rap with the reverse reverb effect Summers used in songs like Go Mode and Trissiana, which would cement it as another one of Slay World's signature sounds. To top it all off, Kankan -Kan was a pretty funny guy. He could do anything and it would just make you laugh. He once went on live and started cooking a steak while off a of perk. And in songs like 380 Hellcat, he would say stuff like, Kicking it with my white boys, they're a little racist. The next member I want to talk about is Isaiah TG, who wanted nothing to do with the group towards the end of 2019, but was actually one of the earliest members, possibly since him and Goonie were both from Ohio. He even has an album called Hashtag 4 Kane, dedicated to the founder. Isaiah was actually the person who added Kankan -Kan to the Slate group chat back in the day as well. His music is nothing short of beautiful. Just listen to Archangels or Interlude and you'll know what I mean. He sings and raps, sometimes even doing both on a single track or doing a mixture of that with the baby voice and speaks about the struggles going on in his life and the drugs he takes to get through it all. Autumn mostly stuck to the plug and B sound but he does have projects from this time where he was predominantly rapping like Wicked Clancy, his collab tape with Summers, and 4 as well as some of my favorite songs by him like Could You, Ariana Grande, Got It, and Protocol. He really just rapped about getting money, scamming, drugs, and his haters. Some of the lesser known members of Slay World were Frank's Last Day, Endo, and Alexander Prey. Frank's pretty versatile, making plug, rapping on regular rap beats, and his most frequent genre, R&B. Endo and Alexander Prey are better known as producers, but they have plenty of big songs themselves, like Ozone, Flying, and Thinking About You. Overall, the sound Slay World pioneered and their influence can still be seen today. For me and many other fans, they're on the same tier as other underground rap groups like Goth Money and Drain Gang.
Slayer World was notorious for the beefs they'd get into and just all around funny situations they'd find themselves in. Here are a couple of them. The Gabby situation. This is kind of important because it was Summers' like first viral moment. Even though it had nothing to do with music, Gabby was a mentally ill woman who had just gotten out of a mental hospital. Just a few days after she went to Summers' house. She wasn't Summers' girlfriend but Summers' friends were interested and let her in the place. The first day at Summers' house she broke his TV. The next day Summer wakes up only to find out his friends had let her back in. Summers kicks her out again. This sparks the infamous live where Gabby goes crazy and breaks Summers' window. She tried to fight one of Summers' friends and it all ended with Summers' female friends fought her. Summers beating up an Instagram hacker. A hacker stole Summers' Instagram for a bit. He told Summers that he wanted to fight and that he was in Houston. They confronted each other on Instagram live. Summers said that he was in Dallas and that he would fight him when he would get back. Summers won the fight and left him with a bloody mouth. Summers vs Lil Tekka Summers was beefing with Lil Tekka after he said he was only cool with Tekka for clout. He eventually made a diss on Lil Tekka, but they became cool later and Autumn and Tekka are actually pretty good friends. The most famous beef was between Summers, Can Can, and Sofago. Summers responded to someone in his live saying there would never be a Fago and Slay collab. Fago dropped Let the Girl Slay to respond to their comments saying Summers got robbed and calling him a junkie as well as addressing it on his social media. Summers fired back with SWK Freestyle calling Fago his son as well as claiming Fago asked him for a repost on SoundCloud. Can Can dissed Fago on a song with SG Kobe Slimy saying what's a Fago and Fago dropped Rat Runners where he would directly diss Can Can telling him he should stick to beats and that he should give Summers his gun back. The beef ended and they're all on good terms now. This last one is really random. It was between Comethazine and Autumn. Comethazine would claim that Autumn was a clone that was trying to bite his swag. The two went back and forth on social media and Autumn made a diss track on him called Catch Out With You. That's it. Nothing really came out of it except a really good Autumn song. Since Slay World was never official, there isn't an exact date to when the group ended because it didn't really go down like that. The group started to fizzle out by the end of 2020. The members drifted apart and are all doing their own thing right now. Lastly, I just want to say the founder of Slay World, Kane, whose vision was responsible for the group, passed away on July 26th, so rest in peace. That's it for this doc. Feel free to comment your thoughts. I go by Rashad Fashir, and this is a collab with Dil Main. Check him out.